bandwidth has uh, always been donated to us since the very beginning, and we have sponsors that continue to do so. All of the system administration uh, for our infrastructure, web development, that sort of thing has been donated by the community. And we also have ongoing relationships with other testing bodies. Uh, so we have uh, close relationships uh, with LPI, so we know the people that put together LPI, say we're going before us and go flood ground. Uh, we have relationships um, with the people that provide the SEND, uh, PHP uh, certification. Uh, we've talked to people within Apache and Postgres that are interested in doing certification. And we also are dealing with a security uh, testing body, uh, OMOX, who's launching their own certification. So we always try to work with other organizations that are trying to do the same thing, especially if they're assessing open source skills. So all of us don't end up reinventing the wheel. We also have uh, ongoing relationships with educational institutions. Education has always been a very important part of certification effort. We want people to be learning BSD as part of their post-secondary curriculum. And we are working with um, universities and colleges to get our exam objectives and gender diploma programs because that's something that's important to us. Uh, goals, our biggest goal has always been uh, to be community based and one of the things we did when we organized is we chose to be separate from the BSD projects. Uh, one, we didn't want to cause the internal um, uh, eternal argument of what is the value of certification. So we wanted to distance ourselves from that. And we also feel that the projects are very good at producing formal documentation, but they shouldn't have to worry about things such as education. So we decided to be a separate body that would uh, deal with training and certification. However, we do support uh, the four BSD projects, uh, Free Net, Open, and Dragonfly. And we have people on our um, internal board um, from all four projects. We have subject matter experts from all four projects. And some of the people on our board or who helped write, helped write the questions specifically uh, joined us to make sure that their BSD uh, project was fairly uh, assessed. So we want to make sure there's a good mix of skills uh, that fairly represent all four of those projects. The other community that we're looking at is sysadmins. So we try to work closely with employers, uh, with people who hire sysadmins, people who manage sysadmins, because one of our goals was to always make sure that the exam itself was assessing marketable skills, so skills that you would actually be asked to perform as part of your job duties. We wanted a very um, practical, uh, reality-based exam. And we find that by working with employers and asking them, what is it that you look for in your system? Groups? What sort of skills do you expect them to have? So we work uh, with uh, employers for that. I uh, mentioned before, uh, education is very important to us. So we also um, work to try to get our exam objectives into post-secondary diploma programs. Uh, one of the complaints that you always hear about um, certification programs is the whole boot camp style of learning. You can't learn how to become a sysadmin in five days and then write an exam afterwards and get a piece of paper saying we did. So that's not one of our goals. We want to make sure that if you are in the university and you're learning uh, computer admin skills, that BSD is in there as well. So that's the value that you can provide to an employer. We also want to have some sort of method available that if you are a sysadmin, how do you actually go out and prove your skills, especially if you're a junior admin. If you're a coder, you can just get a commit bit and make your code is out there for the world to see. But as a sysadmin, what sort of proof do you have of your skills? So one of the reasons why we provide the assessment. Uh, other big goal is to make sure that the exam itself was psychometrically valid. And psychometrics is a um, science that deals with how you assess people. 
and how you assess their skills and what it is that they know. So for example, any um, university that has that accreditation, part of the accreditation is there are standards that they have to adhere to in their diploma programs. And those deal with psychometrics. Anybody who's ever written other IT certifications, especially if you've written certifications from different types of vendors, you can very, very, fairly quickly tell which exams have gone through a psychometric process and which have not. So if you ever take an exam and one of the questions is three pages long and it seems like the whole gist of the question is trying to figure out what it is that they're asking you, that is not psychometrically valid. Because one of the tenets of psychometrics is the question itself should be very clear and understandable what they're doing is they're seeing what do you know about that. So we, we don't want to see if you can figure out grammar and what's being asked, but we want to know if you actually have a skill. Another thing that you get with psychometrics is it's very uh, task oriented. So they want to see can you actually complete the task or can you actually understand what it is that you're doing when you're completing the task. And all of this gets built into the exam itself. The end result is the exam uh, tends to be fair and unbiased. And even better, uh, especially looking at our target audience, uh, which is typically outside of North America, the question should be understandable even if English is not your first language. And most of the people who have taken the exam, I'd say probably 70% English is not their first language. So it's either German or Russian or Polish or Brazilian Portuguese. And they have been able to understand the questions that we exam. Also part of the psychometric process is you have to have subject matter experts, the so people who really understand the skills that you're assessing. And from a reality point of view, what would you actually expect somebody to be able to do? And all of our SMEs are working sysadmins, and they've worked very hard to make the exam practical. So I don't know if anybody's ever written any type of uh, Linux or Unix exam, but often you'll receive questions that says, what switch works with this command to do that? Well, as a working sysadmin, we all know that if you need to know a switch, you read the man page. Especially in the BSD communities, we actually have decent man pages. Uh, so memorizing switches is not something that's practical from a working point of view. Um, understanding what to do in certain circumstances is very practical from a working point of view. So working sysadmins, uh, when we went through the, the uh, question writing process, we actually got rid of a lot of crap that just got thrown out the window that says, nobody in the real world needs to know how to do that. So we work very hard to keep the exam practical. Uh, the other advantage you get with psychometrics is you just don't pay the psychometrician to watch the exam and then say goodbye, it was great working with you, paying you all that money. You actually keep them, and as uh, exams come in and get scored, um, metrics are used to figure out what's happening. So every single question uh, has metrics applied to it, and you sort of look at the trends that happens. So you can actually spot things like, most people get this question wrong, but this group of people seems to be getting it right. Why is that happening? You can also uh, spot anomalies. So if we have uh, a particular doctor or a particular testing center that their people seem to be doing so much better than the rest of the world, that's something that we can look into and say, what's happening that we're getting this result? So we do get uh, ongoing metrics. The other thing that metrics helps us with is uh, as the exam gets more out there, um, so if questions ever did get leaked, we would probably start noticing difference in the trends. And as there's more educational material out there, we would probably have to start raising uh, the exam uh, score because we know that people now have better ways to be able to study for the exam. So again, metrics will help us to discover when it's time to do that. 
part of our goals was uh, to definitely be um, applicable to a global audience and globally affordable was important to us. We did a lot of surveys uh, as part of our preparation and this is how we found out that most of the people interested in the exam don't live in North America, aren't used to paying $500 U.S. due to take an exam, and if that's what we charge, it would probably be two months of their income. So there are parts of the world where North American prices uh, aren't going to work for a pricing structure. Uh, we worked hard to get the exam price down to $75 U.S., and um, right now that's what the exam price is. Uh, we also had a lot of interested interest in the beginning in translations, which is why we have so many translators. And as um, parts of the world, uh, we find out that it would be better for them to have the exam in their own language, we will get the exam translated to that. One of the things that surprised us as we started working with people uh, through the process is most parts of the world, even if English is not your first language, if you're a sysadmin, you work in English. And that's one of the things that they're just used to. So one of the things that we found may actually be uh, more appropriate is to have um, study materials available in the language of choice that can be in English. Now, there are parts of the world where um, the operating systems have been totally internationalized, and it would be better for working system in the native language. And as we come across those, we'll work on translations. The other part of our goal globally was to be globally available. So no matter where you are in the world, if you want to become CSD certified, you should be able to do so. That's something that we are slowly working our way towards, and we're making progress towards that. That was our goals. Uh, take a look at the exam uh, that we have so far, so the BSD associate. So we formed in uh, January of 2005, and the exam was launched in February of 2008. So you notice there was quite a process to get from idea to exam. Now that you know what we're doing, uh, we're hoping that the next one will take three years, and I don't think it will. But one of the things I discovered in this whole process is everything takes about five times the amount of time that you ever would have thought it would have taken. So I'm not going to make any promises. When you're dealing with a psychometrically valid exam, your first starting point is something known as a JTA, or a job task analysis. And this is something that we launched in April 2005. We had it up for a couple of months and then we uh, will report at the end of it. And part of the job task analysis uh, is at one, uh, within the community and before assistant means and employers, and you basically have about 500 tasks, and you get the person completing the JTA to say, how important is this task? If you have assistant men, how much experience do you think they need to have in order for them to complete this task? And how often do they do this task? Is this something that happens once every two years, or are they doing it every day? So we actually look very closely at tasks to find out what is important to employers and what sysadmins are actually doing in their daily work. Once you have a JTA, uh, the psychometrician helps you to sort through all that and you sort of prioritize the tasks that most employers seem to think are important. And the other thing that comes out of JTA is what audience are you going to be trying to attract? Whose skills are you trying to assess? And our initial JTA showed us that we had two very different audiences. We had a junior level sysadmin, probably somebody with about six months of experience. You would let them do some things, uh, but they would usually be working under the direction of somebody more senior. And you also had somebody who was a very experienced sysadmin who has his own way of doing things and uh, typically uh, works by himself. And we decided with the BSDA that we would go for that junior audience. That would be the first one we would assess their skills. Once we knew our audience and what tasks were important, uh, we wrote something called exam requirements. 
And one of the things when you're going through a psychometric process is once you say these are the skills that you're going to assess, you have to make sure that the exam actually assesses those skills and it doesn't assess anything else. So you have to publish what skills are going to be assessed and you have to make sure that your exam does that. And one of the things we found out with working with the psychometrician is a lot of questions, that's a great question, but tell me what exam objective it goes with. And if you can't tell me that, I don't want that question in the question form. So you actually end up uh, assessing what it is that you're going to say. And with the exam requirements, uh, somebody who is a self-starter and is willing to go through those and try those could actually use those to prepare for the exam. And if they could go through those exam requirements, would be in extremely good shape uh, to do very well on the exam. Because basically what we say we're going to assess, that's what we have to assess. You'll notice there was a huge lag of time between the exam requirements being published and the beta period. This was the time when the subject matter experts uh, learned how it is that you actually work with a psychometrician and get exam questions and do what you say you're going to do. So it took uh, it was a bit of a learning curve for us. Uh, being a working sysadmin and having all the evil uh, BOFH things that you have to do, that's not something you can do on a psychometrically valid exam. So we had to sort of work our way through that. So it's quite a learning process for us. Once uh, the psychometrician gave an okay on the questions that we come up with, we launched a beta period. And that beta period lasted for a few months last summer, and we held the beta in Germany, Canada, US, and uh, um, Brazil. So we had a good mix of people who English was their native language and people who English is not their native language. Once the beta period was finished, you notice there's a lag between August and January. That's when we went back to the old drawing board. We looked at all of the results from the beta, looked at the input that the psychometrician did from her metrics. So for example, if we had a question that absolutely everybody got correct, that question was probably too easy. And we had some questions that one or two people got correct. Well, why is that? Was it not worded well? Did they not understand what we were asking? Uh, did we not have correct answers for that one? Was there multiple correct answers? So we had to go through all those and see what was happening. Once we had gone through every single question and gone through all the results and the comments that came back out from the beta period, uh, we met with a psychometrician for something that's known as the ANGOF session. And the ANGOF is a review of the questions that you have and the review has to be done by um, working sysadmins ideally of either the level that you're assessing or people who manage people who are working at that level and they basically look at every question to say is this suited to somebody with six months experience is it too easy? Is it too hard? Is it total crap? Because I would never get them to do that. And we went through the questions that way. Um, our psychometrician has been doing ANGOF sessions for over 10 years with uh, several dozen um, certification bodies. We were the only certification body that we actually completed the ANGOF session one day. We did like an 18 hour marathon. And we told her us because we're sysadmins. <laughs> So uh, she, was, she was found that surprising. But at the end of the ANGOF session, the psychometrician knows which questions are going to go on which versions of the exam. And more importantly, she actually knows what the passing score is. Because up until this point, nobody had any clue of how many questions you had to get away in order to pass. Because we had to go through that ANGOF session first. Uh, once we completed that, uh, we had to wait for her report. And um, our first uh, conference uh, was scale in February. And we had like all of three days uh, to tell people, yes, we now have an exam that we can with us. But we did have some people take the exam uh, at scale. 
Uh, the exam itself, so the target audience is a junior assistant man with about six months of experience. Um, in our uh, exam requirements, there are seven knowledge domains, and they're listed. And the exam is scored 400 questions. And scored means the psychometrician is using metrics on 100 questions. Uh, anybody who takes the exam may find that they get more than 100 questions. And if that's the case, it means the psychometrician has a couple of questions in there that she's testing to see how people react to. They don't count towards your score. Uh, the passing score, again, is complicated. So she does a scale between 200 and 700. 200 means you have no clue what you're doing. Uh, 700 means you're too smart to be taking this exam. And the, uh, if you can get a 500 somewhere within that scale, she considers you to be passed. It works up to be about 66% uh, that you have to uh, pass the exam. Uh, the venue, uh, this year we wanted to start off slow uh, to see what the interest is and to see what we are capable of. And we offered the exam at 20 events, um, I think in about 10 countries uh, throughout the world. Most of them were conferences, but we did have some user groups uh, that had interest and we went uh, uh, to a location uh, for the exam. Uh, most of the places that we went to last year have already said we want to be back next year some other conferences that didn't know about us last year. So we should have about 35 next year. And we are also starting to roll out uh, testing centers at universities and employers uh, that have enough employees uh, that have interest uh, to be certified. Um, when we're dealing with the BSDA candidates, you can't write the exam unless you have an ID. And as of this morning, 740 people have signed up for an ID. And what's interesting is we get people from all over the world. So there are actually 90 countries uh, that are represented by people who are interested in BSD certification. Not counting the ones who took the exam uh, uh, today, uh, 61 have taken the exam. And out of those, they live in 15 different countries. So part of our being globally available, we have interest in 90, we've been to 10, we've assessed people in 15 countries. So part of our goals is to increase that. So the parts of the world we haven't paid yet, uh, we want people to be able to have the exam available. Out of the 61 who've taken the exam, 49 have passed, and the average score is 72%. Uh, the BSDP, uh, the process will be the same as the BSDA, so we have to start with the JTA. Uh, we work our way through the SMEs uh, writing questions. We have a beta period to find where we'll have an ACOG session. Uh, the JTA, uh, we're almost ready to launch it, so it'll either be in December or January. And we try to give about two months to give everybody a chance to respond, because it is a fairly long survey. Once the JTA results are in, I'm hoping it should be about 9 to 12 months um, before we can launch the BSDP. So you're looking at end of next year, very beginning of 2010. Interesting thing about the BSDP is these are people uh, who are targeting people that need at least two years of sysadmin experience and as many years after that as you want. One of the things we found out during the JTA for the BSDA is these sort of people don't want to be told which of the BSDs they'll be using, and they don't want to be told which application they'll be using. So there's big fights between uh, send mail um, users and the different database users and that. So one of the things we're aiming for in our delivery method for the BSDP is to have a virtualized lab-based environment and the exam itself would be similar uh, to the lab for the uh, Cisco CCIE. So you have a list of tasks that you need to do in your environment. We don't care which OS or program to use as long as you're able to do what it is that you're asked to do. So that's our goal for this one. It should be interesting to see how that works out in reality, but uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, works in progress. Uh, we definitely want to improve our availability. 
because there's parts of the world we just haven't been to yet, and there's definitely interest there. Um, there's also parts of the world I would be a bit nervous um, shipping in sand packs to if I didn't know who the proctor was. So that's something that we have to be careful of. So what we're doing is we're building a network of trusted testing centers. And one of the things that we get asked quite often is there's so many, uh, it's so easy to deliver an exam online, why don't we just do that? And we don't want to just do that because it's important to us that the exams actually get proctored. There's somebody in there watching the person taking the exam. There's somebody who actually checked their ID to see they are who they say they are. So uh, for the security of the exam, we're just not going to have it available online. If it is an online solution, it's going to be in a proctored environment. Uh, the other thing, if you've ever listened to any of my previous talks, and we do have the talks archived at the website, is why don't you use existing things like Google Prometric? So there is a whole uh, market out there for uh, online testing delivery. We don't use them, one, because they're closed source, we have no idea what their security is, and two, you don't get in the door unless you plop down to $75,000 US and continue to do so every year. So that's something that even if I had the money, I would not be interested in giving it to a big company to do so. So we're working towards an online solution, uh, preferably open source, preferably BSD licensed, and something that's available not only to us, but to other testing organizations, uh, especially if they're assessing open source skills. Uh, study materials, this is probably the um, a uh, question that I get asked most often is how do I study for the BSDA? Up to this point, we've left it up to the self-starters or for the people who already have the skills uh, to go through the exam requirements. We've also left it up to enterprising individuals. Here's the exam requirements. If you want to go out right and work and make millions on it, go for it. Um, <laughs> if it follows our exam objectives, we'll let people know that the book exists. So that offer is still open. Uh, at the moment, all we have is so-called study DVD, which doesn't contain anything that you couldn't grab online yourself, but it is very handy to have everything in one spot, unless the purchase uh, assists us with our costs. We do have a couple of things on the back burner, though. So we actually had a sponsor uh, approach us this summer and says, I run Google sites for a living, and I would like to be a sponsor by providing you with a site for online courses. So right now, he's working uh, with uh, people in developing the content. And once we have enough content for a course, we'll be announcing that. And because he has donated the site and doesn't want any of the proceeds, we'll be making sure that the cost is globally affordable um, to anybody in the world. Uh, for those that are uh, familiar with Moodle, it's an open source uh, engine, and it's used to provide courses. So you can have labs, you can have uh, chat sessions with an instructor, uh, you can have online quizzes and tests, that sort of thing. It's actually very nice. If you want to look into Moodle, it's at Moodle.org. We also had a wiki that we tried about a year and a half ago to get some user-generated content. And it was basically whoever was interested in certain exam objectives wrote stuff about it. So it was sort of hit and miss which ones are there. But it is available uh, for anybody to add to the content or to use the content. And one of the things we're always looking for is uh, sponsorship to pay an offer to actually just um, write the study guide. Uh, if anybody's ever written a book before, um, you know it's a full-time job, but you still have to pay the bills in the meantime. And even with existing content, three months is a very aggressive schedule um, for getting a book out. We do have authors interested in doing so, and we just don't have the money to let keep them away from their day job for three months. One thing you'll notice is I did say it was a non-SME author. One of the policies that we implemented is that if you actually assist in writing the exam question, you don't uh, either teach the material 
or create study materials. We don't want to give somebody an unfair advantage, or we also don't want them to uh, inadvertently leak exam questions. So we don't want people to study to an exam. We want people to actually learn the skills that we can assess. So we always make sure that any content uh, is not written by somebody who actually helped write the exam. We also always have a wish list. So if I did have a bunch of money, what would I do with it? Uh, it would be nice to have a fund to assist in proctor's travel expenses. Out of those uh, 20 events that we had this year, all of the proctors uh, who went there went on their own time. So we always encourage people, if you're going to an event anyways, or if you're speaking at an event, um, consider um, spending an hour and a half uh, proctoring the exam. But we just don't have the money to give them. So the proctors have been donating both their time and often their own costs to travel from venue to venue. If you are hosting an event, uh, a conference, and you'd like to see the exam offered, I can give you a list of proctors who can also speak who would love to have their expenses paid to the conference. Uh, so that's one way we could assist with that as well. Uh, something that's always been in the back of our mind would be a nice have is even at 75 USD, there may still be exam candidates in the world that can't afford that. And our philosophy has always been Price should not be a reason why you can't have your BSD skills assessed. So it would be nice to have some sort of uh, fund to assist with those. And often we have people in parts of the world where there aren't events where they have to travel even to go to a university. So it would be nice to have some sort of fund uh, for people that fall into that category. And I'm always looking for startup costs and online test delivery solution. I won't be paying anybody 75 grand a year but there are solutions uh, that are available for 5,000 a year. So that would be something that would be nice to receive sponsorship for. Other possible ideas we have floating around, we would like to add uh, some more value to the BSDA program, so perhaps uh, discounts um, for various things. So if you're a BSDA, you get discounts on books or hardware, that sort of thing. Uh, we'd also like to start doing interviews. Um, people who become BSDAs who are interested to tell the world how great it was to be a BSDA and what you got out of it to give an idea of what the typical BSDA does, what you do, uh, what sort of work do you do. There has been some interest in uh, uh, making an exam that assesses PF skills. So rather than having uh, people just learn a checkpoint, or Cisco firewalls to actually showcase uh, PM. So we have, have had some interest in that. And we've also had some interest in having a desktop administration exam. Uh, the current BSDA assumes that you are in the online environment SSH in the systems. So we don't get into uh, GUIs at all, uh, user printing, that sort of thing. Uh, you can help. Um, we do have a lot of actually very good publications uh, on our website. Uh, there is a publication if you're interested in psychometrics, learning more about it. It's basically a psychometrics for dummies, so psychometrics explained. We also have some interesting uh, surveys. So we uh, did surveys on where is BSD being used in the world, and what's it being used for. Um, we have uh, surveys on if you were to take the exam, how much would you be willing to pay, how far would you travel, that sort of thing. And all of our publications are released under a Creative Commons license, and we encourage people to cut and paste out of them as long as they give attribution. Because it's basically information that's of good use to the BSD community, especially when you're dealing with advocacy. Uh, one of the things uh, that we are always short of uh, even more than money because we've got a very good at keeping our costs low is time. There's just so much to do and so little time to do it. And that's one thing that uh, we're always looking for donations of. Um, and if anybody has a couple hours a month, you say, well, gee, I'd like to do 
is up for a BSD project or um, send me an email and I definitely find lots of stuff to do that falls within your interest. Uh, right now we're trying to do a big push to make sure that we have study materials available. So we have uh, people donating to kind of work on the content for that the site so that we can get uh, courses out there. Uh, as in any other open source project, marketing is always the thing that nobody ever has time to do. Um, the graphics, all that cool uh, advertising stuff. So if that's more of your skill set, that so would be great. And of course, uh, money never hurts either. So if you have anything to donate, that's fine. Additional information, our website's at bsdcertification.org. If you're interested in taking an exam, you can go to our registration website. And start at the events page, because it'll show you what events we've been to. So we'll probably be there again next year, and which events are coming up. And uh, you can send me an email anytime to chair at bsdcertification.org. Uh, before I forget to mention it, uh, the exam will also be available tomorrow at noon, but I only have three uh, exam packs left, so we first come first serve. Uh, if anybody's interested in taking the exam, they're most welcome to do so. Anybody have any questions? Yes? So that everybody can hear me. Uh, you said early on that you're interested in working with universities. Yes. Uh, how how do we go about integrating things like that? I'm, I'm a sysadmin at a university. Student assistants working for me. Uh, I train them. How can I use your material to help me help them? Um, our exam requirements document again is one of our publications that's Creative Commons, so we are welcome to cut paste and integrate. Um, one of the things that we've been doing is it's typically on a person-by-person -person basis who's actually inter interested in being the go-to person uh, at their institution. So if you want to uh, see me afterwards, I'll get your card and we'll talk further. Great, thanks. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Yeah. I was wondering if you were ever uh, considering moving the test to a live environment, and if so, when? The BSDA, probably for the next couple of years, we've found it to be very uh, good uh, as a multiple choice exam. We may, over the years, add uh, one or two questions um, that you have to actually uh, do something. But we found the assessment has been very good, uh, even at multiple choice. Now, a lot of people, when they think multiple choice exam, they think, oh, gee, you can just guess if you don't know. Um, but trust me, the psychometrist will look at the results. We know if you guessed. Now, for the DSDP, uh, from the beginning, once it's launched, it's going to be an entirely virtual based exam. So, this one, we want you actually doing things and uh, watching. It's interesting with the psychometrician, uh, when we told her we were interested in a lab-based, a fully lab-based exam, she, I think her hair turned color at that point. Because it's very interesting, how do you actually assess skills when somebody's doing something? Because every sysadmin has their own way of accomplishing something, and they have their own time that it takes to accomplish something. So how do you actually apply the metrics to make sure you get a fair assessment? You just look at the end results and don't care how they got there? Or do you actually care how did they get there? Are they doing it in such an arcane way that takes so long that, you know, should, should I be looking at that? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? I haven't looked at time, so I'm not going to do it for time. Exactly right. Okay. Thanks for your time.